What is up, Best Damn listeners? Back at it with another episode of the Best Damn Agency podcast, where we are the number one podcast in the world, scientifically proven for digital agencies who are serious about growing their digital agency. My name is Joey Gilkey, and as always, I'm here to lead the ship. But uh, the ship isn't worth a whole lot if I don't bring the right people on, and today is no different. My new friend, he's out of New Jersey, he's a cool dude, he's got a podcast himself. Uh, we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about that, um, but I want to introduce you to him. I'm going to bring him up. We got Darren McGarro of the DSM Group out of New Jersey. Darren, thank you for being on, my man. Absolutely, Joey. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it and uh, looking forward to diving into wherever you take this conversation. Let's and do it. Provide a those, little value for the audience. That's right. For those who, uh, who, who don't know and you listen regularly, you guys know I don't, uh, I don't plan a whole lot on these. It's, I like to be curious. It makes for better conversations. So these go where they go, and they're usually super insightful and valuable for you guys. That's why you keep listening. And if you are keep listening, please like, comment, share, do all the things that make me feel warm and fuzzy and let me know you are listening. Darren, why don't you tell people a little bit about you, man? I'll give you guys kind of the stage. Talk about the DSM group, just a little bit about what you guys do and then um, and then who you are, and then we'll dive in a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks again. So DSM, we're actually coming up on February 7th. It'll be 15 years. Um, it started out as my, I guess, my best damn Jerry Maguire story. <laughs> uh, instead of a goldfish, I walked out of, uh, an old agency with a laptop. I went to Ikea, went on the front porch of our old house. Um, when my wife and I, we didn't have any kids yet. And I just said I was starting an agency and I have a really amazing wife who, um, has been very supportive through the years. And we built it up from me in a front porch to two people, to three people, to five people, um, today we are 15 people. We're located in a really cool office up in Mawa, New Jersey, which is about, well, depending on traffic, about 20 minutes outside of New York, 20, 25 minutes. Cool. And we, um, we're a full service agency. So we have a creative team. We started out, um, cause we started out back in 07, primarily as a traditional agency. That was my background in television when I came out of Manhattan. Um, and probably 2013 or so we built it up to have, um, a digital arm. And now I would say predominantly what we do is a lot of, a lot of digital, I would say probably 70, 80% of the work we do, um, is digital. And, um, we are an eclectic group. We love what we do. We have the greatest team in the world. I know that's cliche. Everybody says that, Um, but we're really tight. We treat each other like family. That's really important to us. Uh, That's why COVID has been extremely difficult. Um, You know, we have we have people from at every stage of life. We have one right now who I'm actually waiting for a text. Their her and her husband are expecting their first child, uh, like hopefully any minute now. and we, we go about our business. We primarily do work. Um, we run the gamut from I still have my first client, which is my best friend and his dad's men's clothing store, which is a brick and mortar. That's about 10 minutes away. I really just started out hustling um, with people that I knew in my hometown. And now today we have everything from that store, Sal Loretta for Men in Midland Park, New Jersey, all the way up to you know um, a national pharma client and kind of everything in between we have insurance we're, we're vertical agnostic um that's done primarily for our creative people to keep them sort of chomping at the bit there you go yeah um, but we you know we're a good group we work hard we we're passionate about what we do and we really you know build relationships with our clients that that last so i would say those are our calling cards i love it man so i, I like to ask this question so it's, it's a little bit fun what I like to bring it back. So we kind of have the genesis of the agency. Bring me back to like 12-year-old. 12-year-old Darren. Like what What were you into? Um, I would imagine agency ownership was not in your cards at the time. What did you want to do? What were you like? You know, what... Uh, pay me a picture. 12 years old. Big sports guy. Um, yeah. I was a football player, a basketball player, a baseball player. Did all the sports. Um 12-year-old Darren, it was actually funny because the homage I did just did yesterday, um, 
I wasn't even supposed to be in advertising. Um, when I started my career, it was in media buying. I was a history major at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, I was going to be a teacher and a football coach. I mean, that coaching <laughs> element of 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 Darren uh, is very important to this day. Um, one of the reasons I started DSM was so I could coach with before I had kids with my brother in law and another buddy of ours, Chris. Uh, youth football in in our hometown. Love it. Um, now, now that I have my own son, um, you know, I coach him uh, in in the town we live in now, which is right next to my hometown. It's it's a big part of who I am. It's a big part of why I started this agency. Um, going back to, you know, like giving my wife all the credit in the world because it was all about. It was just all about hustle at the beginning. Mm. Um, and that's always sort of been in my DNA, I guess the athlete in me, if you're going to pay 12 year old Darren, um, always like aggressive, not in a bad way, but like always a sports guy, always aggressive, always sort of tenacious, always, you know, winning a second place trophy, breaking it. And then, <laughs> you know, like that was, yeah. that was just my, that was just my makeup. And it really plays into who I am today at the agency or my role which is like brand ambassador slash sales guy, mm. um, you know, and, and reading up on what you guys do and how you do it and what you told me prior to jumping on here. Um, I'm not a natural sales guy. Yeah. And so hearing other stories like that, like when I, when I talk to people, I think one of the reasons we have really good relationships with our clients is we don't really sell them. It's about like, how can we help you? It's about providing value. It's about understanding. Mm. It's about digging deeper in a personal relationship. A lot of our clients, like we have dinner with them on Thursday nights. So uh, in a normal world, in a non-COVID world. Sure, um, yeah. But, you know, that I think has served us well over the last 15 years. But that's that was 12-year-old Darren. Athlete, loved sports, loved being out in school, playing in the, you know, playing on the field, playing football um that was my passion love it yeah i um i was identical to that man i've sports my whole life played football since i was seven baseball since i was four you know and yep. eventually did everything in, in between basketball soccer tennis wrestling track and field and and i think that competitive nature i mean i don't know how your dad was but my dad was very involved but very um uh demanded excellence if you will and so i think that yeah. That pressure has has uh, refined me over the years, obviously, to and I think it's pushed me to be as competitive. I was talking to someone last night, and a good buddy of mine from college, and we catch up, you know, maybe once a year for the past you know ten, twelve years, um, and uh, and it's funny. He was like, "Man, you work harder than anyone I've ever met, and yet you don't care about competition anymore." of other people like he just he's notices i don't care much about like competitors and i'm happy to play with them you know i think the the sea is big enough but uh i think a lot of it's that inward competition we have with ourselves, right is that you don't care that you lost to the you got second place and you lost to the the first place guy you care that you know you're capable of being first place and you let yourself down at least that's in my case uh so this is an interesting thing, and I'm on the cusp of my 45th birthday uh, nice. in February. And after doing this for 15 years, um, I was just having a conversation with my wife, and I think it's really uh, – I'm at a place in my life where whatever your um, – I put a lot of time and energy into this, and now that I have kids, there has been times – I think it's always about self-awareness and, and growth. And I've kind of gotten to a point in my life where now that my oldest is going to be 13, my middle is 11, and my youngest is seven, there are times where I look back and having this conversation with my wife, or maybe I wasn't the best dad, or maybe mm -hmm. I didn't put enough time and energy on being the best dad or the best husband. And coming into 22, um, one of the goals that I had, and I just started this, and I'm going to do this once a week uh, for the rest of this year and see how the engagement of the first two has been off the charts on LinkedIn, but posting things about me personally and having the understanding that 
just because I'm posting a photo of like me cleaning a toy room with my daughter on a Saturday morning to give my wife an extra hour of sleep mm. or post my son's birthday. It doesn't mean I'm not competitive or that I'm not right. tenacious or that I don't want to win, but there's also these other moments. And I guess it's, I don't know what other word to say other than maturity, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah. Um, I've had an awakening to finding balance because my wife, I think, is extraordinary at this. She's a wonderful mom, and she works a full-time job, too. Oh, great. And when, when somebody like that says something to you and they're that close to you, and my wife and I have known each other since we were five, like, hey, you need to – you only get one chance with your kids and, you know, with, with us as a family – and I missed out on some of those moments. Mm. So I, I'm entering this phase of like, I don't know whether you call it spirituality or like God got your attention or whatever that is. Um, but it's about finding balance. Like in this crazy world of what's going on, I've taken something and built it or I've taken nothing and built it to something. And do I, you know, I always have that like competitive nature of like, sure. I want it to be more, I want it to be more, I want it to be more. But in the balance of that, I maybe have been too curt with my kids or maybe haven't mm -hmm. been as, you know, good to my wife as I could have or gotten angry less maybe. And yeah. so that's been a big thing for me in 2022 to try to find that balance because, as, you know, I guess on the average you live to be 90, like I'm entering sure. the... I'm entering the second half, man. You know, yeah. um, I don't, I don't want to look back and, and not have that too. All right. Now I know you're watching that video. I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm going to, because I would be remiss if I did not tell you about sales driven agency, my company, I'm the CEO of sales driven agency. We work specifically with digital marketing agencies to build out the sales operation. What is the sales operation? Do you ask? Well, in order for you to become a predictable, sustainable, scalable agency, it has to come from having a well-oiled sales operation, which is sales processes, sales systems and frameworks. How do we get repeatable outcomes? Salespeople. How do you go find the salespeople? How do you hire them? How do you train them? How do you manage them when they do start? How do you set them up for success? What does enabling the sales team look like? How do you build out the tech stack? What's the CRM and sales engagement and proposals meeting structure, scripts, templates, what do those things look like? Well, you don't have to figure those things out because you likely will never be able to. That's why we exist. Sales-driven agency, we architect your sales processes. We build out your tech stack. We hire and train your salespeople for you. We will recruit them. We will hunt them. We will even build the compensation plan for you. We will build the training to make sure they're successful. We will train you on how to manage them once we're gone. And on top of that, we will guarantee our success, a 5x minimum return on your investment in the six months we work together, and you will have an entire sales operation built for you. We build the car, we teach you to drive it, we hand you the keys and walk away. If you're interested in having your digital agency have the sales operation built for you so you can scale and grow, become predictable, sustainable, and scalable, go to www.salesdrivenagency.com. You can also click the link below. Again, salesdrivenagency.com. Go book a call or click the link below and book a call. Then my name is Joey Gilkey. I'm going to send you back to the video. Hope you enjoy. Hope you'll also check us out at salesdrivenagency.com. Well, man, I love this conversation, by the way. Um, and I'm a younger dad, so I, I've, I've, um, I've got a ways to go and a lot to learn for sure. But I think for me, you know, a big change in my life probably in the past, I'll call four years, you know, give or take. I had my, my brother-in-law, which is my wife's twin brother, passed away in 2021. And um, 35 years old, young, healthy, stage four cancer, ended up taking him over the course of four years. And, and it, you know, that does something to you, right, when you watch it happen. And one thing I really realized was the word legacy is real interesting, right? I used to, I used to be gung-ho about, like, legacy, Right. And I would be like this legacy flag waver. And it's like, go build your legacy. But I would I would talk a lot about in the in the through the lens of or the context of legacy being related to ambition and achievement. And I've I've actually come to the conclusion where I think that a lot of 
ambition and achievement, though very important and though, you know, something that I thrive on, is not ultimately what leads to a legacy. And, and most people are not going to remember me. Or I'm not, I'm not going to have a lasting impact on that many people in the grand scheme of things after my life. Uh, my businesses aren't. My my investment portfolio is not. like Not that's going to be attributed back to me, right? Mm-hmm. But my kids and how they raise their kids and how those kids eventually are taught to raise their kids, um, that's important. That's legacy. And so that legacy is not as sexy as you know, a Jeff Bezos or a Elon Musk to the world, but I think it's it's wildly important. And so my, that's kind my of a wife, journey I've been on. Well, my wife, um, my wife and I had a really good conversation. Um, I think it was on Sunday night. And she just said, similar to your point about legacy, you're never going to get another opportunity. And we both lost our dads when we were younger. Mm. Uh, her dad was sick for a while. And my dad would just I mean, like six weeks into my freshman year of college, I just got a call at the University of New Hampshire and he was gone. And I was like, what? Like, you're talking about my grandfather. And they're like, no, your dad. Um, So that suddenness, um, one great story I have about my dad, uh, he he was an entrepreneur. He had his own business. And one of the things that that always stuck with me, and I was a product of a second marriage. So he married my mom. My mom was a second marriage and he was an older guy. He had me when he was 50. Mm. I was 18. So when he passed away, he was 68 and back in 1995. And one of the things I remember as a kid being the athlete is playing on the schoolyard and every other dad was working, was in Manhattan doing their thing. And my dad used to show up and not like be involved in everything, but he'd come with like, two dozen donuts for me and my buddies playing football. And I'd be, and when I was nine and 10 and 11 years old, I'd be like, what are you doing here? Nobody else's dad is here. And those moments now that I'm a dad Mm. and now that I'm, it's actually like, I'm getting a little choked up here right now. Um, those moments are mean so much to me because I realize what he, so in, in his previous marriage, I have two half sisters. So I was the only boy as well. And the only one in our family to be able to carry on the name and my son Luca now is. So thank God. Like I was like, dude, that's your, that's your torch. Now you, you Mm. carry that burden. But it's one of those things where I'm so thankful that he had those moments to be able to come and just be like, and all my buddies every year, I, I just post a picture of his, of his headstone on my Instagram feed. And I had people reaching out to me that I haven't talked to that have moved away. One of my buddies, one of the best notes I got last year with my buddy Jeff lives down in Savannah, Georgia now. And he's just like, dude, your dad was a national treasure. And <laughs> so that, cool. means, that means so much to me. Um, and so that's, yeah, I, I think it's a huge part of, sorry, I went on like a really long tangent. No, you're there. good, man. I love this. Uh, I, um, I, I, I've had it. I've had an, I, I've had eye-opening experiences and to that point, no matter what I do, there's certain things in business, and I think you know this too, that you can control. There's mm-hmm. other things you can't control over the last two and a half years. I think that the world has taught us there's a lot more you can control than you thought you could have. Yep. And that legacy of building a company, of doing all the things, tons of people great followings, you know, talking to people, giving back now on this homage series that I do. Um, those are the most inspirational moments. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the conversations that I can have with people where they're like, dude, you don't know what a conversation you had with me three years ago meant. I was going through a really hard time between jobs. All you did was listened. And, you know, now I'm where I'm at. And I was like, I didn't even know I was doing that. Um, so I think it's important to impart that to give back to uh and and to do that type of stuff similar to what you were saying somebody gave you an opportunity you maybe didn't deserve or and you might have taken it and run with it but at some point my chief role on top of being a good boss and a i hate the word boss but a, a good peer to the people in my office is to to a leader or whatever you want to call it is to be a good human being and to check up on people and to make sure people have the things that they need. Um, 
to ensure that they can do their job the best that they can. And yes. that, that to me is bigger than any, I've had a tremendous highs and tremendous lows with sales and losing accounts over the last 15 years and everything that goes and tons of learning experience. Hmm. What I can tell you is there's not been one conversation with somebody or somebody that comes back where people that have, you know, we're more of a, we've been a stepping stone agency for people that want to go on to something else. Like we've had a lot of young people, just the way we've, you know, grown the company, people are getting married. People are having kids. People are, um, getting new jobs. It's, it's, and, and to be able to stay close to these people and to have that rapport with them beyond the walls of what was supposed to be our work environment. Right. Yeah. To me is the best part of what I do. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of why it's not the entire reason why we do it, but it eventually kind of evolves usually in time, you know, is that impact. And so I think what's, this is why I love this podcast is because we can go down rabbit holes and we can talk about things that sometimes have nothing to do with agencies yet are very pertinent to everyone listening for the most part um, or will be whenever you do have a family if you don't already. And so I think that this, these, these, these conversations are fun. And one thing that you, there's a lot of things that stood out there and I wish I could dive down every every side road because there's a couple of really good ones. Um, but as we move more towards like the business side of things, you talked about your people and, and really caring for the people. And I was actually having a conversation with our VP of recruiting um, on our team, Travis, who, who heads up all of our, cause we do a lot of sales recruiting um, for clients. It's like, it's a, a third of what we do, I'd say, or, or a facet of. And uh, one thing we talk about often is it, it's crazy. The clients who take the, the, the interview process or the hiring process um, more empathetically than someone who's just looking for a body to come in and produce. And we're noticing a lot of, of even salespeople and sales is kind of the last frontier of this. Whereas like, I think a lot of other internal like fulfillment delivery roles already do this um, where we're noticing people taking lesser offers at companies where they feel more invested in relationally and, and as a human. And so, like a, a good example was uh, one of our one of our clients lost an amazing candidate that we worked through this entire process. He was the perfect fit. Uh, already had industry experience. Already had this much rapport built with the, the space and and all these good things. And so he lost this this candidate to another company that was poaching this guy at the same time. And he took the the lesser offer with someone who's not our client because they sent him like a, a swag box and a handwritten note and, you know, sent flowers to his wife, you know, like just crazy stuff that they're not even a, a, an employee yet. And they're already showing empathy and care and those kind of things. And, and so he took a, an offer that was like 10 grand less and, um, and a sales role, you know, and sales are money people. So I think it just shows like we deal with humans, especially as an agency owner, right? Like our inventory, we don't have product on a shelf. We don't have software that runs, you know, that we're doing maintenance. Our inventory leaves every day at five o'clock and they come back at eight thirty or nine. You know, I, well, I, I, I'm trying to think of something I can say. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, the thing that I think separates us uniquely similar to what you're saying is again we're 20 minutes outside of manhattan we are mm -hmm. not the highest paying agency we it's actually interesting in the world we're living in now because one of our biggest calling cards everybody that's at dsm made a conscious decision for work-life balance um and one of the things that covid has kind of done is leveled the playing field with regards to people working from home and mm -hmm. And money and things like that. I mean, you know, our CFO came from Condé Nast and was making more money. The first thing I said to her, we were actually joking about this. We had friends in from Knoxville that owned an agency last week that just came. I live like, in Knoxville. <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah. You ever hear of BS and Co? Uh, BS and Co. I don't know, I'd look them uh, up. I don't think so. Rick, Rick Schwartz. You should look them up. Her and, and Bob, they're, they were in last week. They're, amazing at what Very they cool. do we're awesome. in uh something square i forget the market union. square market square that's yep. where they are okay cool um awesome people and uh 
they were in last week and we were just saying this uh, just about how how much time and effort and energy goes into the people and it's mm. just it's just so important um you know i've gone through stages of this agency where i had a partner i had two partners 2019 or 2018 and 19 bought them out um so now i own the company outright again and you, while you go through phases and you go through different iterations um the culture that we had i'll give you an example i, I went back into the agency yesterday um we had a new employee starting and um our creative director and i he's he's just a character and i hadn't seen him probably we were supposed to have our christmas dinner um at, you know christmas event canceled that because one of our employees was you know getting ready to go on maternity leave we were trying to be uber mm. cautious and you know empathetic and mindful of her situation and it sucked because we couldn't do it but you know and and we just gave each other a huge hug yesterday you know it's one of those things where i guess in 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 irl I, i'm their boss i don't you know and there's a fine line like obviously i have to make the tough decisions and everything is yeah. sort of ends up with me where it's you know the buck stops here but like derek's my friend and you know our strategy director dan enrico i mean 2021 or 20 was probably the first time we ever had you know sort of a maturing population at the agency with like yeah. some health things go on that weren't just like covid you know it was not that covid is not serious or wasn't serious early on but you know like the c word was you know hap was happening with people's spouses and rallying around people and mm -hmm. you know one of the one of the best things that we did as a group got four guys together four husbands together and our strategy director his wife was diagnosed probably around christmas 2020 maybe a little bit before and all he wanted to do i'm like dan we're here for you man all he wanted to do was put christmas lights on like for his two little girls and we're like i was like dude you're not getting up on your roof like you're you're playing and by a whole set of car different rules and cards now i said the four of us are going to come over got up on a roof on a saturday morning no questions asked brought bagels put christmas lights on i have a photo of his his daughters and his wife just hanging out the window like looking at the lights oh, that's and it, cool that's everything that's that everything. everything yep um, People are important, man, and uh, becoming more and more so. And I, I think I think the world's getting wise to it. I think there's I think they're realizing, and whether it's for because it's for profit's sake, or you know, and they're realizing retention is challenging. That it's it's an investment we have to make. Mm -hmm. um, it's an investment in in our team. It's an investment in our our business, and uh, we got to realize that we're feeding mouths, and those mouths are feeding other people. And you know, it's not just about can you get this campaign done on time and can you do the work? Um, that's, that's a, a necessity of obviously you got to do the job well, but taking care of our people is super important. We've, we've already talked 26 minutes, usually 10 minutes ago, I would do uh, the mastermind read, but it's been, it's been such a good conversation. So I'm gonna jump in real quick for those who are listening. If you are doing seven or eight figures and you are an agency owner, sorry, six figure owners, uh, not for you yet, um, but I have faith you'll get there. But so if you're a seven or eight figure agency owner and you're looking for a community, a, a mastermind of seven and eight figure agency CEOs that are there to sharpen one another, that I would talk about multiplication often. So yes, we want to multiply profit, multiply revenue, multiply uh, our agency. But if that's all we do, it's a failure, right? We're, even the stuff we're talking about today on this on this podcast with Darren the goal is to multiply your business, but it's also to multiply you as a leader, multiply you as a father, as a husband. Um, and if, if, if we're not accomplishing those things, multiplying you as a human and multiplying you as a leader, uh, then, then we're not doing our job. And so that is what our aim is at the Best Damn Agency Mastermind. Uh, we are a, a unique, uh, intimate group, about a little bit less than 30 people currently, uh, all doing between 1.2, 1.5, and 16 million. Um, and we're there to sharpen each other, challenge each other. We all have similar business models, but none of us compete directly. And so if you were looking for a community of people that uh, do really kick-ass stuff, like go to Tahoe in March. We have a, 
a massive mansion rented out sleeps 50. So uh, if you want to be part of stuff like that, but then also be part of the really cool training and accountability we do on a regular basis, um, check us out. Go do bestdamnagency.co. Check us out and uh, apply. Watch the video at the top. If it makes you, uh, if you get chills after watching it, it might be the group for you. If you don't, it's probably not your community. Um, otherwise, go to bestdamnagency.co. Check us out, the Best Damn Agency Mastermind. And uh, let me bring Darren back up. Darren, so I want to kind of before we jump into round of random and we finish off here in the next, you know, call it seven minutes or so, I want to I get a little bit more into the agency itself. So obviously, it's an agency podcast. What we talked about was the foremost, the most important. Um, and, and even just aside in the middle here, before we jump into some agency specific stuff, I actually want to talk about homage because I think, or homage, however you say, homage, 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 um, which is a serious podcast that you do. Um, what I keep hearing from you is family and people, um, gratitude, mentors. Talk to me about homage because I think that that ties this section up very nicely before we jump into more agency stuff. Sure. Um, homage it was a labor of love in my head for quite a long time. Uh, just a way to say thank you, I guess. Mm. Uh, and as I mentioned, my, so my dad passed away when I was 18 and I had this amazing gentleman named Kenny Sullivan, who was my next door neighbor growing up. And Kenny took me under his wing. He was the guy that, you know, my mom, my, I was the product of a second marriage. I was an only child. Um, and Kenny sort of took it upon himself from a very early age to mentor me and be like a second dad. And when my dad passed away, you know, when I decided, oh, I was going to drop out of school and mm. he's like, yeah, you can get it. I'll get you. I'll help you get a construction job. He didn't tell me I was going to be hanging up in rafters and the high rises in New York City, putting up fire retard in 12 hours. So that lasted like, you know, a semester. And then I got right back into school and finished my edgy. He always had a way of doing. He always had a way of steering me and, and countless other young people in the right direction without actually telling us what he was doing, which to me was it's immense. A gift. Uh, it's a gift. Yeah. And he, um, he pushed me along and he passed away suddenly in August or July of 2019. And I had a buddy of mine who I worked in Manhattan with 20 years earlier. And he posted a, a post on a Friday where it was just kind of like a gratitude post. Um, his name is Case Del Pena. He's down in Florida. And he, I, reached out to him after not, to, I mean, we were connected on Facebook, but like never really interacted. And I said, dude, I got to tell you, you just gave me the impetus to get this out of my head and into the world. And we're 20 episodes in and, uh, it's been a really, it's been cathartic for me, really. It's, it's been a way for me to not only pay tribute from everything from my mom. Uh, my mom was the first one to my buddy Lee, who, we just finished the 20th episode yesterday, who's a VP of new business at an agency in Cincinnati that does new business. So, and every kind of person in between, I've had Kenny's daughter on, she's our neighbor. I've had um, friends of mine. I've had family, uh, it, you know, um, it's turned into a group of now six guys that all connect from my buddy, Casey, a buddy, Victor, every, these six guys that just connected from different facets of life that are all kind of young dads and, and going through life together. And it's just been, um, it's, it's been my way to, to very simply pay tribute to the people who have helped me, who have stood by me, who have supported me and who have, you know, not only in DSM's journey, but like my mom's the first one. I think, I think I cried three times and, hmm. you know, my, my mom and I, Lord knows we butted heads over the years. Um, yeah. but it's, it's, it's just been a tremendous experience to be able to do it. And, um, and, and I think it's, it also sets the tone for when people get to know me as an agency owner, they see that there's a human behind it first. I come into every meeting human first. Hmm. I am not the smartest, the best aspect about how I've grown this business in my opinion and others can say differently is that I, I know what my weaknesses are and I've, and I've been able to put people around me that have supported those weaknesses. So I could go out and be 
a brand ambassador and you know, like I'm a media buyer by trade. And again, sure. I was a I was a history major prior. So my background is really had never to do anything with creative. It never had anything to do with campaigns other than like television. Um, so that that homage has helped and hopefully it continues to help lead if people want to work with us or want to get to know us, it leads with there's a human element before there's a business element. And that to me is one of the best things you can do. If anybody's listening to this and like, yeah, you want to keep part of business, like get to know somebody and put in time to understand who they are as a human being. And you'll make a friend for life. Love it. <clears throat> Switching gears a little bit to the agency itself. What, you know, for you, what would you attribute a lot of your growth to? So I think everyone here listening is, obviously has a desire to grow or else they wouldn't be spending their time here with me, you know, constantly trying to, to find something from every episode to apply to their agency. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, we're listening, you know, we got agency owners from six to seven, to eight figures listening to this podcast. Um, what, what would you attribute a lot of your success as it relates to growth, right? So, I mean, sales or marketing or network, um, how do you guys typically grow? And, and what would you attribute to a lot of that success to? Uh, two ways. A lot of it for us being an agency that started very locally and hustling just people that we knew, mm. um, our hometown and things like that. A lot of it had to do with relationships. A lot of it had to do with networking. Um, as we've grown into a bigger agency, a lot of it has to do with the messaging and tone that we put on our on our website. Um, a lot of the businesses that we work with, and this was done intentionally, when I started this again, going back to like coaching sports for, for my kids now and things like that was to create something that we could help people who are growing their business. But also as I got married and had a family, um, be home for dinner and give me the flexibility to, <laughs> to the point of the conversation that we were having earlier to be a good dad. Mm. Um, and you know, I have three now. I'm still learning how to be a better man, a better husband, a better father yeah, every day. For sure. But I would say I would attribute it to really good tone. We're not for everybody, you know, as an agency. Um, I would say tone and messaging on the site and then the relationship building part of it that I try to impart on the people at DSM so that they can go and build their networks and become less robotic and, and more human. Love it. Very organic yep. way of growing. How, so with you and you mentioned that you guys are, are full service, but you're also industry agnostic. So um, in a world where I think that niching is sexy and, and really picking a niche, picking a vertical niche or picking a specialty horizontal niche of what you do for people. Um, how have you had, how have you had success standing out or has that been a challenge with all the, the niching going on? Because I personally, I'm a big fan of it, right? I my business has a niche. I'm niched into agencies, and I'd say ninety percent of my mastermind agency owners that are in there are all niche. And seventy percent of my my book of business that I serve, who are agencies, are niched down. Um, has it been a challenge to not be niched, and then simultaneously, has there also been a lot of benefits to it? Um, I think as we get more mature, and in talking about like being niche or specialization or whatever it is we have really good case studies across the board mm -hmm. so it's helped us in that regard where we've we've learned a lot i mean as right. a team we've learned a lot there's not one thing we're not in pharma altogether we're not in auto dealers all the you know whatever um as i think the world evolves there may be opportunity for us to become more specialized in the service offering that we might want to partner with other agencies sure. or partner with, you know, we, we have really good people who have a ton of experience. Um, so I think there's, there's benefit. There's been benefit to growth. I mean, for us to be vertical agnostic and, and not a niche agency, it's, it's, it's helped us grow from nothing to seven figures. Yep. Uh, that being said, how we move forward, there might be more opportunity to maybe specialize in, in something a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, 
not from a not recreating the wheel standpoint, but just, you know, it, it yeah, dialing in your focus a little bit to streamline some fulfillment, yeah. streamline some sales efforts. Yep. 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 It, it, there, there's good, there's pros and cons to it. You know, when you're learning a new, when you're vertical agnostic and you have to learn a new, you know, from men's clothing all the way to, yeah, the you know, scale is a little bit harder for yeah. sure. But scale's a little bit harder. The onboarding process might be a little bit more difficult. Um, I, I wish I had a better answer for you other than like, no, I don't know. I, I don't know what the world is going to bring. Like COVID's kind of cha- like turned the world upside down. It has. Yeah. And the good thing about not having a niche is you're not, your risk is fairly mitigated from an industry going away perspective. So there's a lot of, a lot of benefits there as well. It's always just preference and, and it also comes down to goals. And speaking of, so for you, we talked about some things you guys have done really well. What are some areas, you know, because I think a lot of people learn just as much from like, how are we thinking through as a, as, as we run our agencies and uh, our businesses is where, what are opportunities for you guys to grow and where are areas where you feel like you're focused on for areas of improvement moving forward, especially into this year? Areas that we can improve. Um, digital strategies are, are constantly changing. One of our focus, one of our COO and our strategy director and our VP of accounts, um, getting our teams technical trainings, um, being, you know, having them be able to bring new social platforms to the table as they're happening, which seems to be during COVID over the last few years, you know, with TikTok and things, you know, oh, yeah. it's exploded. Um, so things like that are, are very important. Again, I see my role as twofold. I am a brand, my initials are on the door. So I am a brand ambassador to the company and the brand and ultimately the name on the door. Mm -hmm. And the second part of it, and I work very closely with our COO and our CFO to make sure that our team has the resources that they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can have one without the other. uh, Because I think if if you have one and not the other, I think you're doing a great job disservice to your point about having like your people or your biggest commodity like mm-hmm. that's their goal like to me they're everything and I, i've been blessed i could probably i could have probably stayed in a career in manhattan and been making way more money yeah the the relational aspect to the last 15 years and just to be able to see people where they're at in life and it's not with dsm anymore but just to see people in different occupations, getting married, buying houses, having children, yeah. and still being friends with them and having them come back to me and be like, hey, man, I had one one kid who, who worked with us years back. He's like, my wife is thinking about making a change. Can you just talk to her? You know, um, he's a police officer now, like the furthest thing from a marketing guy, sure. a digital marketer. And he's like, can you help? And I was like, Nick, yeah, man, like whatever you need. That's so great. Yeah. So love it, man. I, I think those two parts are are paramount to you know us growing and making sure that we're doing right, not only by the brand and our clients, but our people too. Mm, so good, it's so important, and that's just a common theme I think on every episode we have some iteration of. But uh, the common thread that goes through is just our people is so important. And if if we're looking at this like a machine, then we're looking at this the wrong way. So. Uh, man, thank you. Before we get you out of here, I have to run you through the round of random. Six questions yeah. I ask every guest, not having to do with business necessarily. You down for it? Absolutely. Fire Let's away. Rock. Let's rock and roll. All right. If you could go anywhere, you could teleport from New Jersey to anywhere in the world. You could take the wife, just the wife. You could take the wife and kids. It's up to you. Let's just say you're spending a month somewhere. Where are you going? COVID's not an issue. Everything's normal. No masks, no mandates, just normal life. Where are you going? This is super easy. We have we have a joint that we go to in Playa del Carmen, down in Mexico, mm-hmm. called Rosewood Mayacoba, that have become like family to us. And this place is a it's beautiful. It's like twenty minutes north of Cancun, I think twenty five minutes north of Cancun. We've been there alone as a couple. We've been there with the family. We've been there with my wife's entire family her two brothers wives kids awesome. the place is magical and the people are magical and they've become friends 
like we did a fundraiser here for uh, the general manager of the hotel. He's set up a school down there. He's he's an American, set up a school down there for the kids. Um, mm-hmm. And we did a fundraiser up here. They had this great like picnic style dinner called Saba, named after a tree, a Mayan tree, and um, raised money for you know the kids down there. It's become our like home away from home. That's where uh, that's where that's I would great. spend the money. Could use it right now. I'm freezing. I'm sure New Jersey's freezing right now too. So I could probably take a trip down to Mexico. 13 degrees. 13 degrees. Yeah. Ours went up slightly the past couple of days, but it was 19 or so the other day. All right. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, living or dead, past or present, who would it be? I'm a Green Bay Packer fan. And to connect the dots, uh, I would have dinner. I would love to have dinner with Vince Lombardi. Um, oh, cool. He's the interesting part, my dad was, uh, was older. He was born in 1927, Vince Lombardi, before he went to army and coached in the, for the giants and then the Packers, he coached at a small high school here in New Jersey called St. Cecilia's. And my dad's team, uh, from Lodi, New Jersey played them and they were like a small Catholic school and they got their butts wiped all over the field. <laughs> and he was, so that would connect the dots between my dad and and Vince Lombardi and I think he obviously was a great motivator and you know sure. fantastic head coach. I love that. That's first. That's a that's a first for us. I love it. Nice. All right, if you could build any other business, can't be an agency. What would you build? Ooh, I would build I think it could be for life. profit, it could be not for profit, it could be money is no bounds in terms of you could start any business you want and you got startup capital. Yep. Uh I, I going back to the point of life where I'm at and just the impact that it's had that my wife sort of had in these conversations and kind of where I'm at in my life, I would build a center for families that are really um, with two working parents that are like struggling to maybe communicate yep. um, well, uh, have, you know, not having regrets. I, I don't want to have regrets. And my, when my wife said that to me about sort of like being short with the kids and having them get upset and, you know, I'm not blessed with patience, but, you know, yeah. like <laughs> I, I'm more than happy to be vulnerable. It's just in my DNA. Yeah. Um, but I certainly don't want my wife to not feel mm-hmm. like I care or, you know, or the kids to feel like I'm, I'm not present and yep. 100%. Engaged. I think that would be that would be a great place to start and just have a place where families could come and go and and be mindful of each other. That's love kind it. of where I'm at. Idea. I love it. You're a foodie, right? You like food. Yes. Yeah, me too. Big time. All right. If you and I went out to dinner anywhere in the world, I'm paying. Where are you taking me? <laughs> Any restaurant in the entire world. There my wife and I after we got married, we went to Portofino in Italy. We went on a cruise and we went to the hotel. I think it was called Splendido. I want to say that's okay. the name. I don't know. It was someplace up on a cliff. Absolutely beautiful. Walked in. There was like Ferraris lined up. <laughs> I was like 30 years old at the time. And I was like, wow, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty rad. Uh, I would And the dinner we had sitting out on a balcony overlooking the Mediterranean sea. Um, you, you'd really like it. If you like Italian food and like really, oh, I do. Yep. It, but if you like, like, like really authentic, like Mediterranean, like not heavy stuff, like, Oh it's, yeah. It's, I've Croatia is one of my favorite places on earth. And so, which is right across the Adriatic from Italy. And so that part of the world is just special part of the world for me. And the food that would is be, just banging. That would be it. That would be it. Hotel Splendido in Portofino. Samantha, when you watch this, that was one of the greatest food and just best nights of my life. Mm. Kudos there. Brownie points. Love it. Well, you guys should have a... Uh, when's, when's your anniversary? Or how many, how many years have you guys been married? We will be married on February 12th. We'll be married 17 years, and it will be my first time. And I think my wife's first time. We're hoping that we're going to Hawaii. Okay. Um, it's so our anniversary is the 12th. Valentine's Day is the 14th. My birthday is the 16th, and my youngest daughter's is the 20th. 
Okay. So, Let's do it all in one trip, wrap it up and go to Hawaii. Yeah. Ho- we're, we're crossing our fingers. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, everything's up. Travel's so tough outside of the U S right now, outside of yeah. the, the continental. Yeah. There you go. Our last one before we get into, well, two more, I guess. What are you irrationally passionate about? Can't be business. Can't be business. I am, I am, ir- I am irrationally. So I, I will include four answers into one question. Great. I'm irrationally passionate about the Green Bay Packers. Okay. I'm irrationally passionate about Liverpool Football Club. Mm-hmm. I am irrationally passionate about the New York Yankees. Actually, five. The New York Rangers and the New York Knicks. Oh, that's a bummer. Like, Fortunately or unfortunately, yeah, yeah. The, last, was like, the last 20 years have been terrible, but like yep. I grew up in like the Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, oh, for sure. Marks. those sports are my passion and those are my teams. And that is what I'm irrationally passionate about. I think we have to all have them. That's why I asked that question. It's always funny. I mean, some people just like some people have given awesome answers like, um, just like Star Wars fanatics. Like you'd never know they run a $10 million agency and they just they have Star Wars everywhere. You just wouldn't know it. It's pretty funny. Yep. yep. Cool, man. Where, last question. Where can people find out more about you, more about DSM Group? Um, tell the people where to go. So for us, uh, I'll obviously, personally, um, I've started this journey of personal growth on LinkedIn where the engagement, I've done two posts, doing one every week, mm-hmm. uh, all 52 weeks of 2022. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. Our website is the T-H-E, uh, D as in dog, S as in Sam, M as in group.com. Um, definitely check us out there. Uh, I actually love having other agency owners come and check us out. Like, cool. Give us your feedback, like what you like, what you don't like. And in the world of open community um if you like ideas take them like that's what they're there for right. we're all in this together it's free advice I, take it or leave it yeah I, I feel like it's really important for us to be sharing so um yeah go check us out on all on all the socials and and the dsm group.com and um youtube and things like that and you know all, all the normal all the normal places Man, I appreciate you jumping on. It, uh, it's always fun to, to get on the rabbit hole and, and talk about things outside of just running an agency and how much profit can we get and what sales look like. And It is fun to go down the path of, of life because that is far more weighty, in my opinion, and valuable. I got to say, Joey, this has been one of the... Uh, <laughs> this has been a phenomenal hour in my day, and I really appreciate it Good, because... Man. I don't get to talk about this stuff a lot. You know, you're, you're mired in what's going on and forecasts and solving issues and just being able to be guys and just talk. Totally, uh, man. Absolutely phenomenal what you're doing. And I appreciate you having me on. Of course, brother. Thank you. And for you guys listening, hopefully it was a worthwhile hour of your time as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, if you guys did, please do the things that make me know you're listening. And that is liking and commenting and sharing. Um, and give us a subscribe. Uh, hit that bell notification if you want to know every Wednesday when we drop this and every Friday when we drop our Sales on the Rocks episodes as well. We have got a massive, massive lineup coming up of content, uh, all of which aimed at helping you create the best damn agency you possibly can, live the best damn life as an agency owner you possibly can, until next time, my name is Joey Gilkey. This is the Best Day Agency Podcast. That was my guest, Darren Magaro, of uh, the DSM Group out of New Jersey. Please go check him out. We have linked to all the, the links below uh, for him and for the episode. So thank you so much. Until next Wednesday, peace.